Let's run a statistical simulation of a process that manages bank loans, making sure that the applicant receives a reply in less than an hour. For example, once a customer has requested a loan and by doing so has initiated the process, the process workflow mustn't take longer than an hour to reach the reply to requester task. We will set an alert which will be triggered if the 60 minute deadline expires. To do this, once the process diagram has been designed, we start the simulation mode by clicking on the Run Simulation button. Before running the simulation, we need to input some variables, such as which processes will be simulated and how many will run simultaneously. In this example, we increase the total number of processes to 6000 and we apply a value of 10 to the simultaneous field. The work calendar, indicating hours per day and days per month. The maximum time for simulation. The currency and expected cost, etc. We must assign values to each of the objects we want to control. As I just mentioned, the objective of this simulation is to make sure that the loan applicant receives a reply in less than an hour. To do this, we open the TP6 reply to requester task and add an alert if the task will not arrive within 55 minutes from when the requester initiated the process and an alarm when the time has expired. The alerts are used to inform us if the deadline is approaching and the alarm tells us when the deadline has expired. Next, we assign values to the credit management task where the work will take place. To indicate the time limit for this task, we can choose the most suitable statistical distribution for the type of task, whether continuous, such as Erlang, normal, negative exponential, gamma, log normal, Weibull, discrete, like binomial and Poisson, or unknown distributions, such as uniform and triangular. The most appropriate distribution will differ, depending on the scenario. In this case, we will use a normal distribution, as it most closely represents the majority of work performed by people in real life. We set an average duration of 15 minutes, with a standard deviation of plus or minus 5 minutes. We also input a minimum limit of 10 minutes, as we believe it's impossible to do it any quicker, and a maximum time of 25 minutes. Additionally, the associated cost can be applied to each task. First, we can indicate the number of performers who will manage the task, and then we can input the cost of each one. These costs may be per working month or per calendar month, since the system will manage the necessary calculations based on the indicated parameters. Let's use the settings in the TP1 management task as an example for all the other tasks which have previously been configured. It is also possible to assign probabilistic values to the model gateways. We can see an example of this by clicking on the divergent gateway which determines if the request goes to direct management or on the contrary, it requires authorization. We can distribute the probability between the two possible exits by dragging on the segment separation in this case, we will leave the distribution at 50%. Now we can run the simulation. While the simulation is running, the upper left panel will display the total number of executed processes, pending processes, total runtime, associated costs, the number of staff required, etc. Let's look at the traffic light symbols in the TP6, reply to request a task. The green light represents the number of processes that were completed on time. The orange light shows how many processes triggered the alert, which was set at 55 minutes. And the red light tells us how many processes took longer than an hour and thus activated the alert. We can also see the alert in TP8 Senior Approval. The objects in green correspond to the tasks that were completed within the designated time. We see the message in red, which indicates the end of the simulation. Therefore, we can start analyzing the results we see that the number of alerts in TP8 equate to the sum of alerts and alarms in TP6, from which we can deduce that by improving the performance of the TP8 senior approval task, we eliminate the delays which cause the alerts and alarms in the TP6 reply to request a task. To do this, we need to open the settings of the TP8 senior approval task, and we provide more resources in order to reduce its execution time. Let's repeat the simulation. We can see that the tasks have now been completed on time in the TPA Senior Approval task, so the applicant has received a reply in less than an hour. An alert has been activated in the TP6 Reply to Request a Task, 
which denotes that we were close to the time limit, but didn't exceed it at any point. Now all the objects have been completed within the allocated time. Thanks to the statistical simulation, we have been able to prove that assigning an extra person to the problematic approval task would solve the issue. Moreover, we can see the actual execution time of all 6,000 processes with a simultaneity of 10, which was 2 months and 21 days, as well as the cost associated with 60 employees per day, which amounted to $37,233. More relevant information can be found by clicking on the tables and graph buttons and browsing the following tabs. General, Arrived, Completed, Chronometry, Object Execution Time. As we have seen, it is easy to detect how a task in any part of the diagram can generate a bottleneck and determine how it can be solved. In addition to the statistical simulation shown, AutoPortal makes it possible to run real simulations which are immediately accessible to process designers, managers and business analysts so they can easily run simulations on operating processes in real working environments. Thanks for your attention.